Sorry, I'm at Minerva. I hope you're all having a super week. And today I'm going to share this make. It's a style art dress and it's called the June Sheath Dress. So as you can see, you can make it in a nice solid for your workwear or capsule wardrobe. Alternatively, you could choose to go for a print and that's what I'm doing today. So I'm using this fabulous Minerva exclusive range viscose chalet fabric. And this particular design is called Gleeful Grove. Beautiful, fresh, spring design, I think this one is. I love this sort of tangerine colour here and the nice shades of sort of sage green and grey. A really beautiful colour combination in this one. Now this fabric is 150 centimetres wide, it's woven, it's 100% viscose and it's a light to medium weight fabric so it's ideal for a shift dress. Now should you wish to sew along with me today everything will be linked in the description below so all you have to do is follow the links to have everything you need. So you need to just watch out for the style art pattern for the June sheath dress, the viscose chalet in Gleeful Grove, a matching thread and I'll link in some interfacing as well below. Now before you get started you want to wash and prepare your fabric as you would normally. So if you normally wash and tumble dry, go ahead and do that now and this makes sure that any shrinkage occurs now and not after you've completed your beautiful mix. Then when you've done that, take a tape measure and compare it with the sizing on the pattern. You should always check the sizing on the pattern and don't just go for what you've um, used before because sizing can vary by quite a bit on shop bought items and dress patterns. So always check and you'll get the perfect fit. So when you've done that, we're ready to get started. Now, before you do that, it would be lovely if you could take a look at the Minerva Craft Club, because with the Minerva Craft Club, you will get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. And we'd also love it if you create a free account and connect with our wonderful sewing community of like-minded sewers from all over the world. It's completely free and it's a great place to share your sewing hobby. Now we're going to go and cut our pattern pieces. So let's go and do that together now. So here we have our pieces for the June sheath dress. So here we have our front piece. Place this piece on the fold. Here is the fold. Make a note of your markings here. Your bust darts here. Here we have the pocket placement. And you can also lengthen or shorten at this point. Here we have the back piece. You're going to cut two. Make a note of the markings again. The split here. And this is where the button loop will go. And again, lengthen or shorten as required. And here is the waist point. Here we have our facings and pocket pieces. So here we have your front facing. This piece here, you're going to place it on the fold. You're going to cut one on the fold and one of interfacing and note your markings. Here we're going to cut a pair in fabric and a pair in interfacing. Make a note of these markings here. And here we have our pockets. Cut two pairs. So now we're ready to begin making our dress. So first of all you want to wind half of your thread onto your spool and check your machine needle is sharp. I'm using a universal needle size 70 today. You may want to test yours on a piece of scrap fabric and see what works best for you. When we've done this, we're going to take our small piece, piece number 6. This was a little tab, so we had a small piece and this is to make a tab for the back neck loop. So we're going to make this first of all before we begin, so that we've just got this ready. So we're going to do this now. So just sew down the length of this tab piece. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull it through. 
So to do this, I often like to use a needle on thread because that makes it easier, I think. And if you use some strong thread at one end, and just put a few stitches in to secure it and then push your needle through. It often helps if you use a blunt darning needle. I've got a regular needle here, but sometimes a blunt darning needle is better because then you won't catch on your fabric. But it is only a short amount of space that we're pulling it through. I'm doing a few stitches here. Now you have your loop ready for your button so you can press that flat. So first of all we're going to stitch our bust darts to our front body. So here is our front body and I have a pin here marking the point of my dart and here are my markings in the side. So we're going to bring these together, right sides together and we're working towards this point here. So we're going off at a gradual V, not too suddenly or you will create a bubble. Let your thread run free and you're going to knot it out this end. Push it down towards the dart. Repeat on the other side and press those darts downwards. Pin your pockets right sides facing to either side of your front piece like this and we're going to stitch from here from this notch down to the next notch here and reinforce. Do this on both sides. Now I'm repeating that step on the back panel pieces. So I'm putting the pockets in the same place where the notches are, here and here, and stitching them down. Now I just find it's easier to do it this way than applying your pocket piece to your front pocket bag before you apply the back. I just think it's easier to do it this way. So you can choose to do it like this if you wish, or you can do as stated in the pattern. On my front pocket pieces, I'm going to understitch towards the pocket. So push your seam towards the pocket and stitch a few millimetres away from the edge of this seam here. Now we're going to stitch our front side seam to our back side seam. So place them right sides facing like this. And we're going to start at the underarm here pin it in position now when you arrive at your pocket you want to make sure that you reinforce here at this point now your seams are one centimeter on this pattern and all the notches at the points are one centimeter so you're going to jump over this part here when you stitch your side seam because we want to leave this opening because this is our pocket so if you've done it this way with your pocket pieces on back and front you will need to leave this gap here and then when you've done that you'll be able to stitch around your pocket pieces loop to your right back, back body and at this point it should be facing inwards so this is your back body and this is your armhole so it's facing inwards towards the fabric piece when you turn it through afterwards it will be facing outwards so just stitch it in so that it's secure and back tacked a few times next you're going to pin down your central back seam from this notch here so this notch here at the top is where your facing will meet it. So it needs to be an open seam from here. Back tack to begin. Pin it all the way down 
and stitch that in place with a one centimetre seam. Now apply your interface into your facing pieces and you're going to stitch the underarms of your facing pieces together here. Next sew the centre back of your facing pieces up to the marking here. Then we're going to pin this in place at the back of the dress and line everything up. And we have our facing piece, which is going to lie on top of it like this. So what we want to do now is pin this in place, but we're going to leave sort of five centimetres each side of our shoulder so that we can stitch round our neck facing and our front neck facing and our armhole up to a point, but leave the shoulder running free so that we can pull it through. Now stitch around your neck and armhole facings to your body, leaving about five centimetres from the shoulder here at each side so that you've got that space to pull it through after. Make sure that your armholes match up evenly and that they are turned outwards. So just check underneath because mine's moved now so I'm just flattening that one out. Now snip around the underarm and around your neckline here. You can also trim away some of the excess if you wish. Now before I join my shoulders I'm adding my Minerva uh, Maker label here at the back. So this is the back vent. This is where the button will go. So we have the loop on this side look and I've just added it this side on the back panel so it's between I've got my hand between the layers there and I'm just hand stitching it in place so you might wish to do this or you might want to put yours in the side seam now check the length of your dress and decide on your hem so you can either overlock or zigzag stitch and turn it under or you can do a double fold hem like I'm doing here it's only like fabric so I just feel that this gives it a nicer edge Here's the finished dress. So it's quite a loose shape. Nice neckline. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me today. Please let us know if you have sewn this pattern before, along with any photographs below in the comments, because we always love to see what you've been making. So I think this is a really easy dress, perfect for a beginner. It's got a nice simple shape and it works well with both plain fabric and a print. I think it would also look good in a nice check. But then that's something uh, to work towards if you're a beginner, matching those checks. So have a little play around with this pattern and let us know how you get on. Remember to like and follow Minerva to get more video content like this every week. And I hope to be back soon with another sew along for you. Before I go, if you like what I'm wearing today, this is another Viscose Chalet fabric, another Minerva exclusive. And this one is called Painted Bouquet. And this particular pattern is a simplicity pattern 8910 in case you're interested in making this one as well. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.